I'm Jack Lefko. I'm James Donlin. And we're going to talk about Spaceballs now. Spaceballs! <laughs> the, they wrote the, their own theme song. Their, yeah, we have our own. <laughs> no, the Spaceballs theme song in the movie. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Spaceballs! Yeah. Dude, good movie. I don't, I don't remember how the theme goes. I don't remember. That's how it goes. They I'm just singing it for you. Yeah, they just Space scream Space Balls. I always, I always remember like the soundtrack in the open. For some reason, they were able to capture um, the Star Wars soundtrack opening really well, even though it's like altered. Yeah. Like it, they definitely had had. No books is like, really good at that. Bum, da, ba, bum, bum, ba, da, 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 like it's, da, da, it's just like yeah. just enough. And I think it's one of the things that makes real book Mel Brooks just we're just we're just dive right. Mel Brooks real quick. That makes Mel Brooks so interesting is Mel Brooks. Is like the weird owl of movies. Yeah, he's like the master of parody. He's mm -hmm. like, he can just take a movie and then just change just enough. Where you're like, that's not, it's not Star Wars. Right. But it's so close. And mm -hmm. he like, he gives it enough of a twist that it's different. And it's still, it's still new and it's fresh and mm -hmm. enjoyable. But he's very good at coming up with themes. Like, Robin Hood Men in Tights is right. like the same thing. They, do, they he's, think so much stuff in that. It's so interesting that you say, like, that he's like Weird Al, too. Because I always thought Weird Al was like, this great, he's a great musician. He's actually fantastic, but he makes comedies. And Mel Brooks is also a great filmmaker. And a great writer. And a great writer. A except really good writer. He makes, he makes like parodies, and, and you can see that in every single scene of Spaceballs and his other movies too. But Spaceballs is a, you know, from the opening with the, uh, like the scroll call, like scroll roll or whatever. Yeah. And then it opens with a giant spaceship, that scene that lasts like what, like a whole minute? Yeah, it's like, and, and it's like, yeah, yeah, it's like Star Wars, and it just yeah. keeps, but it just it's keeps just going, like, and it never stops, yeah. and it never stops, and it just keeps going. I'm gonna do this for the next minute, because that's how long it goes. It's just, really, and at the end, I'm not gonna it, do yeah. that, because that's weird. <laughs> and then, I actually wanna see you do it. And then right. there's, yeah, you can just do it the whole time that we're yeah, talking, because yeah. it's probably how long it is. It's about how long it is. And, and the great thing is that he does things like that, where he's able to, the space to, balls. to replicate uh, the shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's, able to, he's able to replicate the effects of Star Wars, I would say, almost to a T in some points. And he even, James and I tell us too, on planet Juridia, uh, which is one of the first planets that they go to, uh, I had no Spaceballs lore. Um, <laughs> there's like a barrier around What's it. What's the prince's name? Um, her prin the princess's name is... Prince, uh, no, is it Prince Vicodin? Uh, uh, oh, no, it's, it's Prince Valium. <laughs> <there>. Prince Valium. <laughs> that just always makes yeah. me laugh, and he's always like yawning and shit. Yeah. That's so funny. And it's That's just, just a good and, joke. And, with, and she, he's getting married to Princess Vesper. Um, and so it's just like these effects, and he's so good at replicating all that. And, and they then, do practical effects, like Pizza the yeah, Hut, like pizza looks the good. Is, like, is he's disgusting, pizza, yeah. but he's like he looks really good. And he, he and looks which good. is what they did with 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 uh, with Jabba the Hut. Like you know, like he does all these practical. That's effects. my favorite thing about Mel Brooks. He doesn't. This is back my down. least favorite Mel Brooks movies of all the ones I've seen. What's your favorite? Robin Hood Men in Tights. I Men think that's the best yeah. one. What about you? Uh, I would say um, I say Young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein. Yeah, just for the fact that like I I also love Gene Wilder. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. But, yeah. Like Robin Hood Men in Tights has so many good. <laughs> Where? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's up there. That's where he's been. We hired him. Yeah, <laughs> he's holding a mic. To him. <laughs> Dead he's corpse of Gene Wilder. The practical effects in his movies are so. with me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> practical. The practical effects. effects in every Mel Brooks movie is so good, and that's what he does. It's very like Buster Keaton. I'm a huge fan of Buster Keaton. Yeah. I think it's very busted. He spares no. He he learns about the movie that he's parodying. And it almost is a very respectful thing to do. He, yeah. He makes sure that he is giving the same quality that the movie's watching. And and you can see in modern day parodies with like, like uh, where there's like. What's that like, like superhero movie? Like that's that's what they think. You know, like those stupid movies, like disaster movie, scary movie. Yeah. Super, like that's not equal. That's and not, they almost like try to be in the same category. But like right. Mel Brooks came out of this age of just like quality. Right. That we haven't really seen in a very Sense. long time yeah. of like comedy movies. Like yeah. I feel like every think, comedy movie we get now, like a new comedy movie is like. I don't remember it. Like I really laughed at Neighbors. Couldn't tell you anything about the plot. I don't remember. Don't remember anything. I've I seen that. It made me laugh. Anything. Yeah. But like that, like Spaceballs is like a different era of comedy where it's I almost think, like memorable. I comedy. think one of the things that makes it interesting is that like we live in a world of dialogue-based comedy, and mm -hmm. we've I've told you about this before, and I don't like it as much. Like I love good dialogue, and Neighbors right. has a lot of really witty dialogue. Like one of my favorite comedies is um, The Birdcage, which is just dialogue. Mm -hmm. There's almost no actual physical stuff and it's really good but Mel Brooks does a lot of physical stuff mm -hmm. like he uses the camera like the opening shot of just the thing Everything. going and there's just so and many going. like little things like Dark too. Helmet can't get his can't, thing can't up get his he's breathing up. and then he <laughs> spits the coffee you know it's yeah. like all, a lot and of visual like, gags little, like whip pans are like really funny and like right. it's so like he uses the camera to make all the jokes and I think it's kind of what makes it stick out 
is you watch something that's funny rather than you hear something that's funny. And, and right. you see something the characters don't see. And this, this scene I'm thinking of is, he's like, oh, what's this radar? And it's the coffee pot. And yeah. it's like, yeah. you see it's Mr. Coffee, but the, the guy in the, the movie guy. doesn't know it yet. He's also and that's short. Like, that's something that really works well for Mel Brooks too. Is like, yeah. you'll see things where the characters do. Right. It just, the fourth At, wall breaks okay, are all okay. phenomenal. There's, this movie, out of all of his movies, breaks the fourth wall the most. And I think like one it's of the reasons- It's a plot point. It's yeah. the, it's, it's the like, only reason the plot continues. Like, like the, my, one of my favorite scenes is where- you fast forward the movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fast forward so you can yeah. see yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, you're right. I forgot. <laughs> That's <laughs> how they find him to go to the moon, is they yeah. fast forward, they forward through, through the they movie. They see what happens on in the movie. Yeah. To find where it's people such a, are. Uh, and then like my, one of my favorite things is when they go to see Yogurt, uh, which is Yoda's equivalent, Yoda, also played by Mobile. The and they're like, they're like, Yogurt, what have you been up to? And he's like, merchandising. <laughs> and he like opens it he up. He opens and it up just, a merchandising yeah, he's campaign. Like, he's like, Spaceballs the cereal, Spaceballs Lunchbox. And they're just like calling so Star Wars out. Star Wars. It's calling like George Lucas out specifically on the fact that, and this isn't George Lucas' fault, but it's just funny that it became such a phenomenon and suddenly you see Star Wars everywhere. And it's just, you could still see it today, but it's great to have this movie where you can look back and still realize, like, holy crap, it was so big that it I've warranted. I've actually never seen Spaceballs merchandise. And except it, in the movie. Except, except in the, in the movie. movie. <laughs> I don't know if they actually sold merchandise. I think they just made it for the movie, and then just was like, all right, here you go. Right. They just never really, like, gave never it Never actually released it. And they have a great cast, too. That's another they thing. They have John Candy. Uh, barf. Uh, as Barf. Barf. Um, uh, Joan Paul. Rivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joan Rivers. Um, Morianis. Uh, who Rick Moranis? Rick Moranis, Moriarty. Moranis, Moriarty. Uh, Rick Moranis, who plays uh, rest, rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't die. He didn't die. He <laughs> stopped acting. Um, and they have this like fantastic cast. And that's like another thing that I think going back to what James said about quality is that another thing that we don't see is we don't see a lot of actors. Like yeah, they had like John Candy, who's a comedic actor, and 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 all these other people, and Mel Brooks and stuff. But we also have uh, our fair share of actors in here that like didn't just do comedy, you know? And it felt great, it gave it more of I think of, another uh, important thing is like, Mel Brooks wrote a lot of the comedy. Yeah, they don't, yeah. Like we get a lot of people that like, you'll watch takes where they just, all the good lines are just improvised. Mm -hmm. They just like, say and something they pick funny. The best. And they just yeah. pick the best one out of like, dozens and dozens of takes. The comedy's relying on the actors to be funny people. But Mel Brooks is just a f really funny writer and he's like, right. just say this. Yeah. Yeah, and his open improvisation it happens in the movies because like just say the line. And there'll be pauses after, like he knows when the joke he is. Like, like he'll yeah. pause, and then like if you don't laugh, you're just sitting there in silence for a second. <laughs> like the the uh, beam me up scene, and then yeah. he walks into a room, and then like the room yeah. is right next to the room. Yeah, uh, there, it was like silence because like the, the audience, if you're in a theater, would be dying laughing. Yeah, it would be laughing really hard. But one of my favorite scenes that they do, and this is actually a good moment where they're silent, is like when they're running around uh, the space ball's main base, and they're looking for the, the our heroes, and they bring them back in, but it's their stunt doubles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like dressed up like, like you idiots, you got the stunt doubles. And they're all just standing there. And there's like a good minute of silence where it just shows what they look like. And like, I'm pretty sure like Barf is a so girl. Like, and like, like Mel Brooks, a lot of comedies don't do that. Like they're like, okay, this is funny. And right. then they just, just back to back to back to back to back. And it just stops. They try to sell you the world. It's too much. They just right. keep selling you over. Like Mel Brooks is like, no, this is funny. Just take a moment. That was funny, let's mm -hmm. enjoy it, and then we can move on to the next joke. It's not so repetitive that you lose a lot of jokes. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, you don't watch an Mel Brooks movie yeah. and miss a ton of jokes. Mm -hmm. There's well, a lot of... Oh, sorry. Yeah, we probably yeah, have to yeah, wrap up, but you can finish your point. Yeah, I, I, just, I also want to say, like, and this is something that I love in comedy movies, and Mel Brooks doesn't do this a lot, but he does it just enough, just, just enough to humanize the characters. Like, there's always, like, one scene where it's not particularly comedic, almost to give the audience a break and stuff, and you can see that with Lone Star's relationship with... Uh, Princess, princess, like with Princess, where it's like comedic this whole time, and they have one moment where it, it's almost making fun of episode five with the Hoth scene with like like Han Solo and mm -hmm. Leia, but it doesn't really have any jokes. It's just them both realizing that they're in love with each other, and it, it kind of brings it back to that like Mel Brooks knows what he's doing when it comes to just adding in character development. I think that's when you really see how well the writer is. Here. He can yeah. reference a movie that's f and make it a funny thing, but mm -hmm. there's no jokes. It's just. Mm -hmm. That's what's funny is that they're there and it's a reference to something else, but he can make it serious and it and like it's, mm -hmm. it's a yeah. good serious moment. So on Spinnaker on Demand, check out Spaceballs. Uh, I'm James Donlin. I'm Jack Fluffco. I'm Leonardo Paley. This is Film Flock. Film Flock. Film Flock. Film Flock. Film Flock.